Listen, some of you have fallen into a I go to church routine, but while you're doing whatever you do, your faith might be drifting into the danger zone. I'm gonna give you not one, not two, but three warnings you need to keep in clear sight. Hey Troopers, it's Mr. J showing a love. Look, be sure to show me your support by subscribing to my channel and smacking that notification bell so that you can receive alerts when I have new episodes. Hey look, let me tell you something from experience. We can get caught up in doing the work of ministry while unknowingly starving our faith. And uh, we all know that doing work in ministry is not for babies, but it is for those that are spiritually growing towards maturity. We're gonna flash back and forth to Hebrews chapter five. Starting with warning number one, you have an apathetic attitude. Verse 11 says, we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer understand. Meaning you may have an absence or a suppression of emotions or passion for your faith. Just plain uncaring. It could be we have become dull Christians. Have you ever said to yourself, I should be farther along in my faith than where I'm standing right now? Oftentimes, God wants to take us to greater things that he has planned for us. But first we need to identify our problem areas that seem to get in the way of our spiritual progress. A non-caring attitude about your faith can lead you off into some uncharted murky waters. And before you know it, you're asking yourself, where am I and how did I get here? You'll continue to drift off into darkness until you have a desire to change your heart. Can you imagine what it would be like if Christ had an apathetic attitude towards us? You whom they call Mr. J, live your life as you please. I can care less. Yeah, that's a scary thought. Moving on to number two, you lack spiritual growth. In fact though, by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Think back to the first time you accepted Christ. Is there a difference in what you felt spiritually then and what you feel spiritually now? Hello? Hey buddy, I'm about ready to head out to Bible study. I can pick you up if you need a ride. Hey Jay. What, you need another ride? Look, I just got off work. I'm tired. I'm brushing. Can't you see I'm brushing my teeth right now? No, I can't make it. Alrighty then. Spiritual growth is something that we have to continue to work at, just like any other growth area within our lives. There are some basic principles as Christians we should understand. And our faith continues to grow branching off of those principles. Babies progress from milk to solid foods, and we know this. But we can't seem to process the same things happens when it comes to spiritual development. If you've been following Christ for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years plus, and you have not grown past that basic milk nutrition you received that first year, uh, you might have a problem. A person cannot grow and survive off of milk alone. In the same way, believers need spiritual solid food in order to grow. You would think that God's gift of salvation would move us to worship and a desire to share his love with others. Here's number three, you lose effectiveness. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Righteousness means right living. So my purpose for living is to please God in everything that I do. Because if he's not happy, I will soon be unhappy. Christians can become less effective in their faith due to a lack of time spent reading God's word. Sometimes we should ask ourselves this question. Would I consider myself as an encourager for the kingdom of God or more of a hindrance? To make it plain and simple, when people see my life, do my character point them towards Christ or somewhere else? So to display Christ-like character, look at yourself in the past year to see if you have grown spiritually, moved backwards, or stayed the same. What would you do if you saw a danger sign that indicated your life was in immediate grave danger? Would you do the same if you discovered you were in a dangerous place spiritually? Work on making an effort to spiritually stay on course with your faith. Now here's my challenge to you. Think about what you can do this week to become more focused on living out your relationship with Christ. Be sure to send me your comments and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out my other episode on five ways to absorb God's word. But whatever you do, continue to keep showing love. I'm Mr. J. I'll catch you on the next episode and peace.